Southeast Missouri Real Estate with Wendy Flynn, your local residential real estate expert. I'm here today with Haley Bowens of First State Community Bank. And boy, I tell you, if you need a home loan, she is the girl you need to talk to. Got some questions for you today. The first of which is prequal letters. So constantly, crazy market, you know that. Oh, yeah. um, houses flying off the market and buyers are wanting to go look at homes. They're excited, they're ready to buy. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we get ahead of ourselves and we'll go look at homes without a pre-qualification letter up front. Such a mistake, right? Asking for a disaster. Okay, <laughs> tell me, tell me more. So with the market as hot as it is, and Wendy knows, these houses are flying. Yeah. So you've got to have a pre-qualification letter in hand when you're going to look at these houses. Yeah. Um, so the first step to do that is contact your lender. You're going to want to do an application, of course. We have online applications you can fill out straight from your pajamas on your bed. Um, it's easy peasy. You're going to fill like out. like that. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, you're going to fill out all your basic information. It's going to ask, okay. you know, social, birthday. You don't need to have a stack of paperwork with you while you're filling this out. It's going to ask your basic stuff. And anything that Good, you don't know. Good, because I got to dig. <laughs> yes, exactly. Anything that you don't know, um, leave a blank. Your lender will call you, and they're going to go through anything that's important that they have to have with you over the phone. Okay. Okay, um, I will say during the pre-qualification, especially if you're needing it fast, maybe you're at a weekend open yeah. house or you're doing mm -hmm. something, we can go off of stated income. So that just okay. means that you are telling us how much you make. You're not okay. showing us your documentation. Um, so if you go off stated income, obviously we would prefer you to give us W-2s, yeah. pay stubs, taxes. Yeah. But if we need it quick, we can go off stated. Okay. Um, but yeah, you're going to fill that application out. We're gonna get your documentation um, from you. Like I said, pay stubs, W-2s, taxes, if we have time for that. We're gonna analyze that application mm -hmm. and then we're gonna see what loan products best fit your situation. Okay. And get you that letter. So kind of take some of the guesswork out of it, mm -hmm. but stated income. Yep. Okay, so let's touch on stated income yep. for just a second because if we should maybe have a tendency to say, well, I'm just going to round up a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we don't it's do not going to work, right? No, exactly. <laughs> so if we do have to use stated income because you are in a time pinch and we need to get that done for you, I would say underestimate rather than overestimate. Okay. Um, one thing for certain is a lot of people have overtime income and they're always putting a lot of overtime income on their application. We can only use certain amounts of overtime income, especially maybe none if you haven't been there for a certain amount of time mm -hmm. or things like that. So typically I like to look at their base income, mm -hmm. especially if we're going off stated. Um, and that's what we're going to qualify you off of. But always go off gross, not net. Okay. We're going to go off gross okay. income. Um, and like she said, don't don't round up. Let's go yeah. down if we need yeah. to, to make sure that we're not over making, over yeah. making promises that we can't uphold. So, and then once we actually see that income documentation, we'll really analyze what we okay. need to use. Okay, good. So, um, you're going to dig. Mm -hmm. like, we're going to dig. <laughs> you can't hide from your lender. That's for sure. Okay. So you're going to find out things that we don't know right. about ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> it's almost, it's always easier to be more upfront with your lender. Mm -hmm. um, have these conversations with them. Maybe if it is something that you're a little leery on. Some people think I had a bankruptcy four years ago. I'm not going to tell my lender about it. Guess what? It shows on your credit yeah. report. We're going to see yeah. that stuff anyway. So if you just, if you have any concerns, uh, that's why it's important to pick a lender to, that you trust is because yeah. you can be upfront and honest mm -hmm. and, hey, I did foreclose on mm -hmm. whatever seven years ago. Does that matter? No. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. You just have to be upfront and honest with that. Well, lender. and it's not like you're going to broadcast it from the exactly. rooftops. So you're bound no. by the same confidentiality, ethics Absolutely. rules that I am can get in a ton of trouble if oh, we for sure. overshare. For sure. Yeah. And trust me, I mean, everyone's got a situation and everyone's got a story. That is so true. Yes. That so, is so true. you know, it's nothing to be ashamed about. I have some people call like, well, my credit score is a 650. And I'm like, girl, I just saw, <laughs> you know, a 400. So you no, don't you, even know. Yes. You may be in a much better situation than yeah. you really think that you are so well, and let's face it don't most of us at some point in our lives go through a slump oh yeah of sorts absolutely. where absolutely. you know I especially young parents who are like you know we don't have a lot of extra money we don't have a down payment whatever like raised four yeah. children had no money right exactly <laughs> no absolutely and I think a lot of people will kind of shame themselves or when they don't have money well that's why they make yeah. down payment programs for that, you know, suited for people yeah. that need that. So. Oh, you've you've hit on a couple of things that I wanna I wanna hit the brakes on real quick. So, the one is I'm gonna 
roll back yep. just a little bit. So uh, pre-qualification, pre-approval, mm -hmm. very closely related. Mm -hmm. We'll just use those interchangeably yep. for the yep. purposes of this video. Um, that's not a guarantee. That's Absolutely. not a guarantee that we're getting to the finish line. Mm -hmm. That's that's a good faith of sorts of the lender saying, based on what we've seen, this looks like something that we right. can do. But there's a lot of looking, there's a lot of research to be done down mm -hmm. the road to make certain that those credentials of are sorts met. are there. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So like what you said, whenever we're doing a pre-qualification, we're looking at that outside picture. We're mm -hmm. going to look at your income. We're going to look at your debt to income ratio, all that good stuff. But for example, um, let's see, we've got someone that's barely qualified and they come and bring in their bank statements to show that they've mm -hmm. got funds to close for mm -hmm. closing and they've got 26 year to date overdrafts on their account. Our underwriter isn't yeah. gonna wanna see that. Yeah. Bank statements aren't required for your pre-qualification um, process, but when we get that, that could be a red flag and could you know knock us out. Um, that or even maybe the appraisal comes back and the property has this wrong with it and this wrong with it and this wrong mm -hmm. with it and maybe it doesn't even meet the fixed rate guidelines so until we get to closing table and we sign closing docs you're not there are a lot of guarantees unknowns. yes absolutely yeah. okay. absolutely okay um so the other thing was the down payment mm -hmm. in general yeah so if i'm hearing you right and I want to make sure that <laughs> we're guiding we're guiding our clients yep. and, and customers in the right direction. I don't necessarily have to have a down payment at all. Right. So if I've got five hundred bucks in the bank, mm -hmm. can I buy a home? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Can I buy a home? Yeah, absolutely. If that that covers your earnest money right there. Okay. Um, and I mean, you're going to be looking at a typically a no money down program is USDA mm -hmm. or VA. Um, mm -hmm. VA is obviously the um, military veterans loan. Those are extremely popular in this area. Yeah. USDA is going to be your more popular one. Um, but like Wendy said, you have no down payment. There is closing cost involved. Yeah. But if you get your seller to pay for those for you, or you roll them into your loan, that's the only program that we can do that. If the, okay. if uh, the appraisal comes back high okay. enough, um, then yeah, you're coming to closing with nothing but your earnest money being and we paid We have for. a lot of sellers cover those closing mm -hmm. costs for buyers who maybe don't have that cash on yeah. hand because it comes off their bottom line. Absolutely. Their proceeds, mm -hmm. when they walk away, it's just taken out of their yeah. check, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a extremely popular loan option. Um, like you said, especially for those younger families, first time yeah. home buyers, um, getting into those starter homes. So for sure, it's got a great interest rate. Um, it's a, it's a harder loan process, I would say, just because you are yeah. going into it with no money down. So of course there's gonna be more restrictions um, as a lender. Um, but yeah, it's a great loan product. For so sure. another good point. You're like a lot of restrictions. So we, you're <laughs> kind of warning us up front. Like, right. like those those loans that have the lower down yeah. payments or zero down payment, like there, there are quite a few hoops to jump through. But for, for sure. such a large purchase and you're asking somebody else to come to front the money mm -hmm. for that, it stands to reason that there are a lot of hoops right. and that there's a lot of proving to do through the contract period. Absolutely. I mean, you're going to have your basic requirements that all your other loans do, you know, your basic documentation, but there's little things that USDA requires that maybe a 15% down conventional loan would yeah. not. Um, one thing I talked about earlier was even um, bank statements. As far yeah. as bank statements go, if you have a USDA loan, if you have any deposit into your bank account, that's not your payroll. Mm -hmm. You have to prove what that money was from. So okay. we have to source it, um, write an explanation over what it, that's from. Just because USDA is such an income-based mm -hmm. loan, they mm -hmm. have to make sure that money's not coming from another side job that we don't know about or something like that right. because there are income limits for so that it really just it all comes back to the paper trail. Yep, it all exactly. comes back to let's make sure that we're fully mm -hmm. exposed and we know what we're getting into right. where the lender's concerned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anytime you make any decision financially, almost during this loan process, it's best just to ask your lender first. Oh you know. gosh. Yeah. So we tell people that I know as realtors, we're, once we go under contract, we're like, okay, no new credit. Yep. Don't ask go buy lender, a vehicle. <laughs> don't, don't open a store card, like nothing. Right. Like, job stability, financial stability, the whole thing. Like talk to your lender mm -hmm. before you do anything because Absolutely. you want your situation to be as good at the closing table or just before um, as it is right now. Yep. Otherwise it may inhibit your ability to get that loan further down the road. Absolutely. And man, what a disappointment. There's even some people that have um, quit their job and got a new job during the process. Yeah. Like, but I make more money. Yeah. Like, okay, you make more money, but now 
there's now we have to wait for a pay stub or now we have to wait yeah. for a, it could prolong the process or it could hurt your process altogether. Okay. So yeah, as long as you're upfront with your lender and again, that's trusting your lender, keeping them informed all the, throughout the whole process, um, then they'll walk you in the right direction. But we'll hold your hand. We'll hold yeah, your hand. Absolutely. She'll hold your hand. I'll hold your hand. That's what we're here for. It's all good. You're not expected to know everything. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, um, okay. I, I think just one more question for now. I've got yeah. a ton of questions yeah. that we could ask, but without dragging this out all week long. Um, okay. So if I am one of those people and I'd love to have my own home, but I'm just not sure, maybe I'm a little embarrassed to pick up the phone mm -hmm. or whatever. If, if I've got credit karma, if I've got credit wise on maybe a credit card, or maybe I've just gotten my free credit score or yeah, whatever from yeah. one source or another, if I'm seeing a number or I think I've got an approximate number, at what point would you say, you know what, I think it, it's probably worth your while to pick up the phone, give me a buzz, and let's at least see if we can make it work. And right. if not, maybe sooner than later. Yeah, for sure. I would say, I would say look at about a 600 or higher. Um, 600 is not going to probably get us there, but at least then we can look at your report, see what you've got going on. Yeah. You're going to have an idea of this needs to be paid off or this needs to be paid down or, um, to know what we needed to get you there. It's at least worth a phone call. Right. At that exactly. Point. Yeah. 620 is probably where we need you to be to okay. get you to most of the loan programs. Um, but like I said, at least that 600 will give you an idea of what you've got yeah. going on. Cause a lot of people don't even know what they've got on their credit mm -hmm. report. They could be shocked at what's pulled and what's in a collection or what's showing as a missed payment. At that point, it may mm -hmm. just be as easy as a phone call to yeah. the creditor that's showing to have a correction. Could have yeah. something wrong. So, and again, there's no judgment. No, like, absolutely not. Yeah. For sure. Okay. But yeah. Awesome. Well, we're going to we're gonna do this again and we're going to delve a little bit deeper and maybe mm -hmm. some of those different loan types so they kind of know what to expect and absolutely. what's out there for them. But at this point, you want to share your contact information so they can give you a buzz yeah, and get absolutely. started? Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to give me a call. Uh, my cell phone number, got that one on me all the time, is 573-366-9639. Forgot it for two seconds. <laughs> and my email address is going to be H-B-A-U-W-E-N-S at FSCB.com. Okay, and if you want to get a hold of me, by all means, my cell number is 573-380-0553. You can also call my office during business hours. My number here is 573-803-3600. Just ask for Wendy. Um, if you want to email me, that's fine too. My email address is wflynn, F-L-Y-N-N, at remax.net. I know we're both looking forward to hearing from you. Please hit subscribe. We'll be back. Thanks a bunch for watching. Bye, Thanks, guys. guys.